11 by Sandra Cisneros. What they don't understand about birthdays and what they never tell you is that when you're 11, you're also 10 and 9 and 8 and 7 and 6 and 5 and 4 and 3 and 2 and 1. And when you wake up on your 11th birthday, you expect to feel 11, but you don't. You open your eyes and everything's just like yesterday, only it's today. And you don't feel 11 at all. You feel like you're still 10, and you are, underneath the year that makes you 11. Like some days, you might say something stupid, and that's the part of you that's still 10. Or maybe some days you might need to sit on your mama's lap because you're scared, and that's the part of you that's 5. And maybe one day, when you're all grown up, maybe you will need to cry like if you're 3, and that's okay. That's what I tell mama when she's sad and needs to cry. Maybe she's feeling 3. Because the way you grow old is kind of like an onion, or like the rings inside a tree trunk, or like my little wooden dolls that fit one inside the other, each year inside the next one. That's how being 11 years old is. You don't feel 11, not right away. It takes a few days, weeks even, sometimes even months before you say 11 when they ask you. And you don't feel smart 11, not until you're almost 12. That's the way it is. Only today, I wish I didn't have only 11 years rattling inside of me like pennies inside a 10 band-aid box. Today, I wish I was 102 instead of 11, because if I was 102, I'd have known what to say when Mrs. Price put the red sweater on my desk. I would have known how to tell her it wasn't mine instead of just sitting there with that look on my face and nothing coming out of my mouth. Whose is this? Mrs. Price asks. She holds the red sweater up in the air for all the class to see. Whose? It's been sitting in the coat room for a month. Not mine, everybody says. Not me. It has to belong to somebody, Mrs. Price keeps saying, but nobody can remember. It's an ugly sweater with red plastic buttons and a collar and sleeves all stretched out like you could use it for a jump rope. It's maybe a thousand years old, and even, it belong even if it belonged to me, I wouldn't say so. Maybe because I'm skinny, maybe because she doesn't like me, that stupid Sylvia Salvador says, I think it belongs to Rachel. An ugly sweater like that, all raggedy and old, but Mrs. Price believes her. Mrs. Price takes the sweater and puts it right on my desk, but when I open my mouth, nothing comes out. That's not, I don't, you're not, not mine, I finally say in a little voice that was maybe me when I was four. Of course it's yours, Mrs. Price says. I remember you wearing it once. Because she's older than the teacher, she's right, and I'm not. Not mine, not mine, not mine. But Mrs. Price is already turning to page 32 and math problem number four. I don't know why, but all of a sudden I'm feeling sick inside, like the part of me that's three wants to come out of my eyes, only I squeeze them shut tight and bite down on my teeth real hard and try to remember today I am 11. 11. Mama is making cake for me tonight, and when Papa comes home, everybody will sing happy birthday, happy birthday to you. But when the sick feeling goes away and I open my eyes, the red sweater is still sitting there like a big red mountain. I move the red sweater to the corner of my desk with my ruler. I move my pencil and books and eraser as far, of, as far from it as possible. I even move my chair a little to the right. Not mine, not mine, not mine. In my head I'm thinking how long till lunchtime, how long till I can take the red sweater and throw it over the schoolyard fence or leave it hanging on a parking meter or bunch it up into a little ball and toss it in the alley. Except when math period ends, Mrs. Price says out loud and in front of everybody, Now Rachel, that's enough, because she sees that I've shoved the red sweater to the tippy-tip corner of the desk and it's hanging all over the edge like a waterfall, but I don't care. Rachel, Mrs. Price says. She says it like she's getting mad. You put that sweater on right now and no more nonsense. But it's not now, Mrs. Price says. This is when I wish I wasn't 11 because all the years inside of me, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1, are pushing at the backs of my eyes, but when I put one arm through one sleeve of the sweater that smells like cottage cheese, and then the other arm through the other, and stand there with my arms apart as if the sweater hurts me, and it does, all itchy and full of germs that aren't even mine. That's when everything I've been holding in since this morning, since when Mrs. Price put the sweater on my desk, Finally, let's go, and all of a sudden, I'm crying in front of everybody. I wish I was invisible, but I'm not. I'm 11, and it's my birthday today, and I'm crying like I'm three in front of everybody. 
I put my head down on the desk and bury my face in my stupid clown sweater arms. My face all hot and spit coming out of my mouth because I can't stop the little animal noises from coming out of me until there aren't any more tears left in my eyes and it's just my body shaking like when you have the hiccups and my whole head hurts like when you drink milk too fast. But the worst part is right before the bell rings for lunch. That stupid Phyllis Lopez, who is even dumber than Sylvia Salvador, says she remembers the red sweater is hers. I take it off right away and give it to her, only Mrs. Price pretends like everything's okay. Today, I'm 11. There's a cake Mama's made for tonight, and when Papa comes home from work, we'll eat it. There'll be candles and presents, and everybody will sing happy birthday, happy birthday to you, Rachel, only it's too late. I'm 11 today. I'm 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. But I wish I was 102. I wish I was anything but 11, because I want today to be far away already, far away like a runaway balloon, like a tiny O in the sky. So tiny, tiny, you have to close your eyes to see it.